for one night, they're turning this museum into a pub. They've got the high tables for the beer tastings, games like cornhole and Jenga. They've even got a place where you can take an 1800 selfie. So they're hoping you'll stop by and come take a taste of something right from Augusta's past. Come for beer, stay for history, and take a sip back in time. So this is the cookbook itself, and it says Mrs. Hill's new cookbook. An Augusta woman, Mrs. A.P. Hill, from the 1800s is the inspiration for it all. Buried deep in her 146-year-old cookbook, right below the recipe for cheap beer and corn beer, is the recipe the local Riverwatch Brewery tried to recreate. So this is recipe number 888, and it is for a persimmon beer. We thought it was extremely cool um, that, uh, that A, this cookbook even existed, and B, that they wanted to recreate one of these beers. They brewed it here, starting only gallons at a time, and quickly realized making directions from 1870 fit into the 21st century is a bit of a challenge. There are things in the recipe that uh, I don't know. So when it tells you to start out with a, uh, a bushel of persimmons and a bushel of wheat bran, it's like, okay, bushel, yeah, <laughs> not really sure what a bushel is. <laughs> this is a persimmon. A bushel is 42 pounds worth. Once they figured that out, their job was bottling up the past to take with you into the future. Even though it was a lot of extra time and effort, the recipe is almost 100% historically accurate, minus a few health adjustments. Not wanting to have tomorrow's headline be, you know, local brewer poisons everybody with, we boiled it so that it would be, uh, you know, a little bit more hygienic. The idea is this Victorian woman and her beer will attract a new generation through these doors. I mean, it looks very millennial friendly. And that was the purpose. Uh, we wanted to draw a millennial crowd. Blending the young and the old through a drink that never seems to go out of style. So guys, they only brewed about two kegs of this persimmon beer. So if you want to get a sample and taste it, then you have to buy tickets and come down here to try it. Um, or you can also buy a bomber. They have these bottles with these great labels too, where you can buy one of those. But because they did it the 1800 way and followed the recipe, all of the bottled beer still needs some time to ferment. You can actually see the yeast in the bottom. So it has a little reminder on the label. You actually can't open the bottled beer until November 21st. So maybe just in time for Thanksgiving, guys. Christy, I know you're on the clock, but that guy just snuck a sample right there behind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a lucky girl today, aren't I? Yeah. You no, I actually got a sample just a little. I do. I got a sample just a little bit ago. Um, it's very light. It's very fruity. A persimmon is a citrusy fruit. It's really good. Um, you know, they, they didn't think this would be a bestseller, but if you like golden wheat beer, then you're probably going to like this one. Um, so I, I say come on down. Now, here's the thing that's funny. They didn't realize how hard it would be to find a persimmon that's ripe this time of year. <laughs> right, yeah. So Riverwatch Brewery says they have about 50 pounds of persimmons that are just not quite ripe yet. So we may see this beer again, maybe next summer. Fair enough. Great night at the museum, Christy. Thanks so much. And maybe that's my sample. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring it back for you.